Okay, so can we switch to the next slide, please? Right, so it's no news to everybody that climate models, that climate is running hot. It's, it's obvious uh, that knowledge of climate sensitivity and polar ice melt uh, is evolving. Uh, and that sea level rise is significantly faster than previously thought, which, as we all know, uh, results in frequent and destructive storms, storm surge, severe precipitation and flooding. Next slide. So, I mean, uh, to cut to the chase, the fact is that nuclear uh, uh, will be one of the most significant climate casualties and much sooner than expected. So with rare extreme events today becoming the norm in the future, existing mitigation measures will become increasingly obsolete. And it says UK coastal, but in fact, not only UK coastal, but worldwide coastal nuclear will be one of the first and most significant climate casualties to ramping climate impact. And it's not simply UK nuclear, sorry, I'm, I emphasize, this is a discussion that I've, I've rehearsed a number of times, is quite literally on the front line of climate change and not in a good way. N next slide, please. So what's important about this is that you know, the, the key you know, USP, unique, unique selling point of, of nucleus climate. But the reality is you know, uh, quite the reverse. Uh, and in, so in, in the medium term, and certainly the long term, I mean, the, the, there will be huge uh, impacts, but in the relatively near term, it's not just sea level rise that's important, because the understanding is that sea level rise may or may not be stepwise, but it's the question of storm surge. Now, uh, what storm surge is, is basically when certain sort of uh, meteorological conditions meet high tides. And as we've seen, basically the sea just basically ups and just moves in land. Now, according to the British Oceanographic Data Center Global Extreme Sea Level Analysis, quote, the magnitude and frequency of extreme sea levels, a factor of mean sea level tide and storm induced increase, which can cause storm surge and catastrophic flooding has accelerated worldwide. Next, please. And you know, as the UK Institute of Mechanical Engineers says, and these, they're not, they're, they're largely a pro-nuclear bunch. Uh, basically, I just looked at something that they published in 2008 or 2009. And they said, you know, the, the almost verbatim quote, existing and proposed new UK, because it's the UK Institute of Mechanical Engineers, uh, reactors together with their spent fuel ponds and radioactive waste stores will be increasingly vulnerable to sea level rise, flooding, storm surge, and nuclear islanding. Uh, quote, UK coastal nuclear sites will need considerable investment to protect them against rising sea levels and even re relocation or abandonment. And I, I've, I've delivered a, uh, the, the, the reference to that for IMEC. Also, at the end of this discussion, what I'll do is that I'll share two reports that I've published, one about uh, the nuclear, civil nuclear as climate casualty, and one as uh, uh, military nuclear as climate casualty. Okay, so people tend to say, well, you know, what does the US think about all of this? Well, perhaps surprisingly, the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which is this sort of key regu regulator of nuclear uh, in the US, says that 55, and again, in these, uh, in these two publications that I'll share with you, okay, you can find all of the references to this, 55 US nuclear sites have already experienced flooding hazard beyond the design base. Now the design base is basically, we say we will do this. You know, we will say we'll do this on the box. The US Army War College says that nuclear power plants are, quote, 
at high risk of temporary or permanent closure due to climate threats, with 60% of US nuclear capacity vulnerable to major risks, including sea level rise, storm surge, and cooling water shortages. And as we've seen in France uh, over the last year, uh, there has been significant reduction in French nuclear power output, precisely because the rivers uh, were basically too hot, not simply to provide the cooling, but the discharge of the nuclear uh, to, 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 to the receiving waters would have polluted the waters and, 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 have, and have basically stuffed them. The, the ecology would have been stuffed. So they've had to kind of severely reduce uh, uh, their, 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 their nuclear output. So already we're seeing climate impact on nuclear. Now, there's a couple of examples, again, that are in the, the, the reports that I'll, I'll share with you after this discussion. This is Dungeness, a very old nuclear power plant that has just come offline. You're, you can look at the image and you can see basically that's a shingle beach near to the shore, and that's Dungeness. So next power plant, uh, next power plant, next. Now that's Dungeness. Now the red, uh, Dungeness is right at the tip of that sort of wonk, basically. That's a model. Uh, that's a reasonably acceptable model, okay? I mean, there are various models, and, and uh, as we know, models can be right, models can be wrong, but this looks likely to be Dungeness around 2050. Dungeness is at the tip of this. The red is annual flood risk at 2050. So that's, you know, that is something to you know, get one's head around. The next slide, please. Now, this is size will be nuclear power plant. Now, as we all understand, the next nuclear power plant that is supposed to be around size will, the size will see a, a, a brand new uh, French EPR reactor. Uh, and notice the, the shingle beach as well, too. Now, the next one, please. Now, this is a map. Now, size will see, you can't probably see that, but the kind of the green bit in amongst the red, the sort of the bit above is where size will C would be, and the bit below is where size will uh, B uh, is, okay? And you'll see this is an annual flood risk map at, at about 2050. And again, uh, the, uh, the reports that I'll, I'll, I'll share with you after this presentation will provide all of the information about these models why these models are good, you know, what is the model, you know, what these models are based on. Hang on a tick. Um, so just go back to that, okay? And you'll see that basically what you'll see is that uh, both size will see and size will be are uh, largely, almost entirely surrounded by flood water once per year, let's say by 2050, but actually that could be by 2030, 2040. Next slide, please. Okay, now, that's a, that's a link to one of the two um, uh, reports that I'll link to. I'll also link to another, which talks about uh, 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 military nuclear and how military nuclear in the UK is also subject to significant climate change. But let's talk about the good news. Let's talk about what's really happened. Now, we all are phenomenally scared about what's happened about Ukraine, about the, uh, the war, about uh, climate change. However, the reality is the renewable evolution is here. One minute, okay. please, Paul. Okay. So last year, solar and wind provided 80% of total new electricity generation capacity installed worldwide. Renewables have met all the rise in electricity and demand in the first half of 2022, preventing 40 billion pounds worth of fuel, uh, dollars worth of fuel costs and 239 megatons of CO2. And all this because utility scale renewables can be built on time, on budget, costing less than one quarter of new nuclear. So let's get this straight. The renewable evolution is here and it will change everything. It will, it will also change the way that we 
we engage with the environment, when we turn on that light, when we turn on that power, we will know that it comes from renewable sources. And this has military strategic implications. The majority of the wars that have been fighting are energy wars. It's impossible to fight over wind and solar. Thank you. Paul, thank